having snuck into your report before we got to this point <laughs> and, and looked at <laughs> looked at your data. I was looking at the uptake on Go and Rust at the very bottom of that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you know the graph I'm talking about. Yes, it was all the languages, all the languages, right? And I was dismayed by that a little bit. Mm. I'm kind of wondering, and I'd love your insight. Are those two going to come together over time? Are you seeing that in the longer trend? Do you think they stay the same? And I just need to settle into the fact that we have specific purpose languages for specific functions and I need to own that. What would you advise me to do in, in my thinking going forward? There's definitely different families of languages trying to solve different kinds of problems. And every language design decision is a compromise from what I've seen. So as you start making collections of compromises that are coherent in some way, shape or form, you mold a language for a particular set of use cases. Python, by making so many design trade-offs for readability, sort of ease of getting started and things like that, it was easy to get started. And a lot of people learned it and it sort of has this executable pseudocode thing, nature, which people like. And so it got that. And then there were another set of design decisions that said, we should make the VM as simple as possible so we can integrate with C libraries. That's an important, C and C++ interop was an important thing. Okay, well, that's a really, really big design decision to stick through for like 25 years. And if you do that, what happens is you end up being like one of the best languages to script or integrate or embed into a C, C++ runtime environment, which includes all of those like numerical libraries that people have been developing for forever. So, oops, you happen to be like a really great scientific computing numerical language all of a sudden, even though you are not anywhere near, I mean, Python was designed to be a more friendlier bash, you know, and maybe a slightly more readable Perl. And so these collections of design decisions sort of put you into a particular niche or maybe a very large niche. And so when you look at the design decisions behind Go and Rust, right, there are very sharp pointed opinions as to, you know, Rust is about that type safety. Like, let's not have any more buffer overflows on streams. Like, let's just not have that anymore, right? Surely we should get there in 2020. And so I think that design decision and optimizing for some of those usability and, and developer quality of life things, it puts you in a particular spot. Go, you know, is different. Go is like, you know, we want to be multi-threaded out the wazoo, super fast spin up. And then we're going to vendor the world, make everything to a single binary, really big binary, but a single binary. So there's just different design decisions that put you into different places. And for that reason, I think that it is more likely in the future for these things to interop with each other over APIs or over data sets or maybe over shared data abstractions like Arrow or things like that. That's probably the more likely long-term scenario because it's about separations of concern of who's writing the code. 